Hi everybody, my name is John. I'm head of content SEO here at IWD Agency. And today I'm gonna to walk you through a really popular SEO platform. I'm sure a lot of you have already even heard of it. It's called SEMrush. And so it's really an all-in-one SEO platform. It can handle everything from keyword research to competitor analysis to auditing links. It has some really great reporting features. Just about everything you need to do really. Today, I wanna to show you how I would use SEMrush to do a quick competitor analysis on a web page that maybe we're thinking about launching or maybe we have a version of it, but it's just not ranking very well. So I rather quickly, I wanna to put together a strategy to achieve similar results to this competitor. And today the competitor is going to be Land's End. I used them last week. We did a video similar to this on Ahrefs. So I'm using them again. I have my most Land's Endish shirt on. It doesn't matter why I picked it, I guess. It doesn't matter what shirt I'm wearing. You guys don't care. You just wanna see how to use SEMrush so this is the domain overview report. I'm going to take this URL from the Land's End site, pop it in here, and this is what we get back. First, you see authority score. The nice thing about this is I can actually just cheat and read off what SEMrush says these metrics are. But if you're using this tool at some point and you don't want to come back for whatever reason, you don't want to rewatch my video, fine. But luckily, you can just read this off. So authority score is SEMrush's proprietary metric measuring the domain's reputability. Man, those are two really big words. It counts for the number and quality of its backlinks, organic search traffic, and overall authenticity of its profile. So basically, they're just saying the authority score is not that different than the DR in Ahrefs, which is just to say, how much does Google trust this website? How much does Google think that this website understands their industry? And how much can they just automatically trust them with their traffic? I think SEO expert Kyle Roof described it once was like, how much will Google just give these guys traffic without them really having to put a lot of SEO effort into it? Because they just know that if they put up a page, that is related to men and women's and children's clothing, they can be trusted with Google's users. So 66, according to SEMrush, is very good. That's kind of an interesting metric because if you look up here, I mean, they get 5 million visits a month. They're ranked for 770,000 keywords according to SEMrush. So I would maybe put that as really, really, really good, but it's all relative. There could be stores getting way more traffic than all this or that otherwise just have sites that Google trusts more. But in any case, this is a nice reference metric to be able to look at quickly and kind of getting a sense for how much Google trusts and how tough is it going to be to beat these guys. One thing they don't have that Ahrefs does is an authority score for the page itself. That's also helpful because this whole site is a 66, but some of their pages might be weaker than others. So it's nice when you can see that some of these pages maybe aren't quite as authoritative as the rest of the site. Those might be easier to beat. Up here, you can see they have 51 referring domains. So 51 sites are linking to this page for a total of 81 backlinks. And again, down here, you can see they're moodering. Yeah, I'm just gonna call it moodering. I think that's better. They say their link power is great. And they also have organic traffic over here. So this is also feeding their authority score. They also try to measure sort of how organic or I guess how natural the profile of the site is, which they kind of succinctly described on here as saying, does it look like the site was designed for people or was it designed more for search engines? And obviously, if you're just designing your site for search engines, generally speaking, that doesn't last for long. You obviously you do have to think about how actual people are going to be interacting with your website. Put another way, search engines can't wear cool flannel shirts. So you got to think about those guys. Well. That one actually is cool. So that's the authority score. And again, a lot of that's obviously coming from backlinks. So we want to dig into that. And they're getting 81 from 51 domains. Here's their backlink report for that page. You can see that all of them are coming from texts. About 75% of them are follow links, which are obviously generally speaking a lot better than the no follow links. But when we scroll down here, this is where it gets kind of interesting. As you can see, this one, they're the best one they have, judging by their authority score. SEMrush will tell you the authority score for the domain sending these backlinks as well, which is helpful. At a glance, if these are like some pretty high authority scores, couponsdoom.com does not have a huge authority score. This backlink, it's no longer there, it's lost. Land's End is no longer benefiting from the links they're getting from couponsdoom.com. I'm going to click over to active. And this way, I'll only see which backlinks are currently helping that page. None of these links are really doing a whole lot for them. So so link wise, I'm not too worried about that page. The only reason I'd want to look at the lost ones really is because if these were larger numbers, and especially if they're coming like blog posts or something, I might say, well, we can maybe get backlinks from there as well. Maybe we want to contact couponsdoom.com and see if we can't convince them to let us also get a backlink. So again, when you look at just the actives, it's not 81. So keep that in mind if you're using SEMrush that you really do want to click over and just look at the active ones. It's only 34. The lost ones could be helpful if you want to actually go try to get them yourself, but this number might be a lot lower than it actually looks. So those are your backlinks. That's really all I'm going to look at from there. And obviously monthly visits, 
is is helpful to look at although i think that's for the whole entire site and we're really just looking at this page so again keep that in mind now i want to look at the actual traffic itself here we go so we have about 5200 people visiting the website i'm gonna click on this now and i want to look at their keywords but just like the backlinks i want to do something first to get a little bit of a better idea about how much traffic is really coming to the website or i guess how much traffic we can really hope to get with a similar web page and up here is 4200 so we click through here and you probably notice that i think the last screen was like 5200 in traffic and now it's 42 200, and that's because when you click on it, it's just showing us U.S. traffic, which is fine. I'm just going to assume that we're a U.S. company that's only shipping to the U.S. We can change it if we wanted to, but that's why that number is going to fall down a little bit. So you have 631 keywords now, 4,200 clicks a month. And then this is, Sam Rush is saying, well, if you wanted to buy this traffic, if you wanted to run ads, your traffic cost would be $7,400 a month. This is an estimate too. So Sam Rush is a nice, big, powerful platform, but it's still, take this with a grain of salt. It's not a bad idea to run one of your own pages through Sam Rush and then see what SEMrush says your monthly traffic is and compare it to your actual numbers in Google Analytics. And that'll give you a better idea of really how accurate SEMrush is going to be. And so you can kind of mitigate your expectations a little bit better there. You definitely don't want to be in the position of telling your boss or your client that the page you're about to create is going to be good for 4,200 clicks a month. And it turns out it's like 42 or something. So I would run that little experiment. Then we have our keywords down here. And this is fairly self-explanatory. So you have the actual keywords right here. You have the intent. This is basically like, why are people searching for this? I like that SEMrush does this. I'm going to go down each of these real quick and just give you an example of each one. So commercial is when the user wants to investigate the brands or services. Then you have navigational. So the user wants to find a specific page or site. Transactional. That's if the user wants to buy something, obviously. And then informational. So that's when the user wants to find an answer to a specific question. Here's how I would put it. The I is for blogs. So if someone's searching for this one, SEMrush is saying they're probably just trying to read a blog. You would not necessarily want to try to aim a product page at this if what they really want is just to read a blog about this topic. It goes the other way as well. If Semrush is saying this one is a commercial, or again, just means someone wants to spend money, then they're probably not in the mood to read a blog right now. That's probably not what they're doing. I'll link to this in the description. They have a nice little breakdown here of these keywords as well in a lot more detail. You can't necessarily trust these 100% either. Like this one, for example, lands and flannel shirt, informational. This would look to me like T here, transactional. People want to spend money, but let's just see what shows up. Maybe I'm wrong. We might find some blog posts. Maybe it's the people also ask. Maybe that's what SEMrush is pulling from. But even then, I wouldn't create a page on this keyword in the hopes that I'll end up over here. It really does look like these are all transactional. If I want to rank for this keyword, I'm going to need a product page or a category page at least. I think this is nice, but I would still probably search for these myself just to see what people want when they're searching for them. SERP features, you can click on here and find out what the first page of Google is going to look like in terms of, again, we saw like the People also ask, there might be images on there, there could be site links, FAQs, etc. And I would still say it's worth it just to actually search the keyword yourself and get in there and really look at what's actually showing up so you can get a better idea of what you're going to have to put on there too. You want to look at what competition you're going to have. So for this one, for Lands and Flannel Shirt, you can see Lands as a top spot and the second spot. There's all of these ads, then the third spot, then the fourth spot, then the fifth spot, then Amazon, then Target. So it's probably going to be pretty darn competitive. We'll dive into this a little bit more in just a moment. The position is just telling you where Land's End, where this page ranks. Looks like they have a 13th position. You can see if they moved anytime recently. If there's an example of that on this one, you can see they moved from 13 to 15. If it was a more dramatic change, then maybe you wouldn't want to emulate this page if you're trying to rank for men's flannel. Obviously, this is a big one. Ranking in the 13th position for flannel shirts gets them, it looks like... 544 clicks a month. So that's good to know. Your traffic percentage, this is just of the total traffic, how much does 544 make up? They're saying it's about 13% looks like. And then traffic volume, this flannel shirts gets searched for looks like 60,500 times a month. And then here's where you get into your keyword difficulty. So for flannel shirts, SEMrush is saying, yeah, that's a 75. And I imagine that's hard. Lands and flannel, they're saying, that's eh, actually pretty easy. But let's take a look at just lands and flannel. Because even though they say it's easy, I'm guessing there's going to be a ton of lands and at the very top and that's not going to used to be so again lands end has the first second and third position we have these ads here people also ask at the fourth position the fifth position the sixth position target kohl's amazon round out the top 10. i don't know if i'm missing something here but that does not look like it would be easy to get to at all if i had a client who wanted this keyword i would have to have a very honest conversation with them about it's not going to be easy I know SEMrush knows a lot, but I would just say, be careful. But that also brings up a really good point about if you're trying to go after branded keywords, it's usually going to be a little more difficult. Sometimes you have to because you sell branded.
branded product, which is fine. But if you're trying to take a Lands End flannel from Lands End, that's not going to be easy. Let's just say in this case, my client does not sell Lands End flannel. They just sell men's flannel shirts. That's why we're looking at these guys. It's really, really important when you're looking at this kind of research to filter out those brand names. So in this case, Lands End, let's take that one out of our report here because this will give us a much better idea of how much traffic we can really hope to get by making a similar page to this one, but for our product. Now we can scroll through this. You're not going to see Lands End. You're not going to see, you know, if, if this was like Duluth Trading Company or whatever, because again, we're probably not going to be able to rank very well for those who get a ton of traffic. Now we can get a better and more accurate estimate. Okay. So it's 2,500 and 611 keywords. And again, if we care about traffic cost, that's where we'd find that information. Now we can go through what do we want to rank for? What do we want to try for flannel shirts? Well, that one's really difficult. I would still search for these manually. Now you have a much better look at which keywords you can probably hope to go for and how difficult it's going to be to try to get them. This is the basics of just kind of looking at these web pages and trying to figure out how much volume they're getting, how they're getting it in terms of backlinks and keywords. And then of course, we'd actually want to look at the page itself. That's kind of outside the scope of using that tool, but we'd have a better idea of what keywords we need to use in order to get the traffic we want. That was SEMrush. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below or just contact us and I'll see you next time.